And so I wrote a little rap song called You So Fly, and I'll give you a Hit couple of bars. Come on, let's you, know. you so fly, flapping with your bling. You so fly, rapping when you sing. My hormones and my peeps. And I think that's probably enough. 1077 Pulse FM, home of the 2019 federal election for Surrey and its neighboring cities. Hashtag Pulse Politics. The Canadian federal election is coming up on October 21st. Today's Pulse Politics federal election debate takes us to South Surrey, White Rock. My name is Tara Lopez and we're joined by Pulse FM's news director, Kevin Diakiu. Conservative candidate Carrie Lynn Finley was unable to join us today. Green Party candidate as well. Uh, Beverly Pixie also declined our invite. But in studio today, we do have NDP Stephen Crozier and Liberal Party's Gordy Hogue. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, Tara. Hi, guys. Uh, it's it's great to have you here. Um, you're you're. It's been described as a battleground down here in South Surrey. You've got uh, uh, the, the conservatives and liberals uh, sort of neck and neck. Um, I was hoping to have Carrie Lynn Finley here so we could have a fulsome debate uh, from the uh, top contenders. Um, what we want to do here, guys, today is get to know a little bit about yourself. So what motivates you in, in regards to why you run for politics, why you want to put yourselves in these offices. And I'd also like to know, uh, alongside that, what you see as the top issue is your bank, don't know the door knocking down in South Surrey. So, um, uh, Stephen, uh, NDP Stephen Crozier, maybe we can start with you. What motivates you for, for running in this riding, and uh, sure. what do you see as the top issues? Sure. Okay. Well, I've been a teacher for 30 years, and that's primarily why I'm running. I'm looking at uh, what the future is that we're offering our young people, and uh, I see how that has deteriorated over time. Um, you know, 30 years ago, I felt pretty good about uh, what I was offering students in the classroom and, and what their future would be. Uh, right now, uh, what are we offering them? Precarious employment, uh, which means precarious income. Uh, they're graduating with thirty to uh, around thirty thousand dollars in debt. I think that's the across Canada average. Uh, so you 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 graduate with thirty thousand dollars in debt. Uh, house prices are are out of this world. The uh, rents are, are 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 actually sort of keeping pace with that. So affordability is in, incredibly difficult for these students. And then throw in that the climate crisis that we're in right now. Uh, and I think that the eighty five thousand people that showed up on the streets. Vancouver uh, last uh, on the 27th uh, shows the um uh, shows the, the, the growing recognition of that problem. So uh, there are so many things that young people are facing. Uh, at any given time, statistics show that 50% of our young people studying in post-secondary education are suffering either from anxiety or depression. And I think if we put ourselves in their situation, we can understand why. Uh, when I was their age, uh, I was offered uh, or I had the opportunity to go to university and graduate with very little debt, in fact, because we had a combination of loans and grants. Uh, that's something that's been removed. Uh, and student loans are one thing that, uh, that, that uh, people cannot get out from under, even if they declare bankruptcy. And uh, this, is, this is really quite unfair. So we're... Um, I, I've seen this deterioration for, for young people and their future, and uh, this is what's motivating me. Okay, thank you very much. Now, so th that's the top issues for your you know, affordability, particularly regards for education? Uh, not just education, of course, but, I'm, uh, but when you're asking about why I decided to run, that's primarily what the, what my, uh, uh, yeah, wh why I made that decision, because I am concerned about what I see for young people. But, of course, all of these issues affect, uh, the, the issues affect us all. Affordability is huge for everyone, and uh, not just for students, but that was my focus, and that's that's how I. That's why I chose to run. Is that the top issue you're seeing in the riding right now? Uh, affordability is huge. Yeah, a lot of people. Whenever you go around and 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 uh, I'm going door to door, and uh, they take a look at uh, housing in particular in terms of affordability. Uh, that um, is taking so much money out of our economy. In fact, because people are spending a large amount. I think the statistic in in uh, South Surrey, White Rock is somewhere in the neighborhood of 
twenty percent of the people are spending fifty percent of their um, uh, of, of their income uh, either uh, on housing. Uh, okay, fifty percent or more. I know the Dems are talking about uh, building five hundred thousand uh, homes in in ten years. Uh, what else would you do to help cut down on that uh, affordability problem? So in terms of affordability for housing, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. So there is that, and a lot of that, too, it has to do with the type of development that has gone on. So that 500,000 homes, that's going to be, uh, you know, we call, we call it non-market. But in right. fact, this is something that the Liberals got out of in the, um, uh, in the 90s, and that is um, public housing. And this is something that we need. That would be something that would balance the market. Right. And uh, so, so this is uh, what would happen with that 500,000. And uh, homes that would be co-ops and uh, and and public housing. Basically, we would work with various uh, uh, nonprofits to to bring that about. So I know this comes with about a ten billion dollar price tag. I'd love to know where you guys can get the money for that. There is so much money out there. Every time, whenever I hear that, you know, well, where are we going to get the money? Uh, for one thing, there there we w- will have a one percent uh, wealth tax on those making over twenty million dollars. Um, or, pardon me, uh, who have uh, accumulated wealth of over $20 million. Uh, I think if you look around, you see all of this building going on. Uh, you see huge houses going up. There is lots of wealth out there. Uh, you see the increase of the, uh, of the incomes of the 1%, uh, but this is not something that's, that's filtering down. This is money. This is wealth that's being sucked out of our economy, and we have to change the way that we do business. Thank you very much, Stephen Crozier. Uh, Liberal uh, Gordon Hogue, uh, I'd like to uh, have the same question to you. What motivates you to run for this office, continue to run for this office? You've been doing it for a while. And also, what do you see as the senior most issue down in South Surrey? Well, I've, I've lived in this community all of my life, and uh, I didn't grow up particularly interested in politics. As I, I went, graduated from Sam Amwell High School, I came home from school in grade 12, and my mom said, I see in the paper they're short little league coaches. I think he's a coach. I said, but mom, I'm, I'm playing ball four nights a week. I don't have time. Uh, so I ended up doing it after school. I ended up coaching for about 20 years, and five years into it, the, our team won the right to go to Edmonton for the Western Canadian Championships. The president of the league told me I had to go to a white truck council meeting, tell them I'm taking this group of kids. I went to that. I came home after that. And I was sitting at the kitchen table, 10.30 at night, had a glass of milk and a peanut butter sandwich. My mom came in and said, how'd it go, son? I said, oh, mom, it was old people. It was dragging on. And she looked at me and said, you know, son, I'd always raised you to be the kind of person, if you didn't like something, get involved and try and make a difference. And uh, so I said, I'll show you. Then I'll run for city council without any particular motivation other than trying to, to respond to my mom's needs mm-hmm. or my mom's direction to me and uh, and I did that for for 20 years I was mayor for 10 years and then I moved on and then uh, I was approached by uh, Gordon Campbell to consider running in a by-election mm-hmm. I did that for 20 years and felt I'd had enough and was actually uh, at that point I was I'd finished my my doctorate I had a teaching position at Simon Fraser I was appointed adjunct professor in criminology and was moving on to that and then there was a by-election uh, federally and I ran in that by-election because Partially, I, I had a, some un- understandings, a better understanding of what I thought needed to be done. I have I've been feeling so good about our, our world that the economy is becoming more globalized and we're lifting poorer countries out of, out of poverty, that our politics around the world be- was becoming more liberalized and we're more accepting and more engaging. And something's happened in the past four or five years that seems to be blocking that again, that we're, we're seeing boundaries with, with Brexit, with uh, what's happening in the United States, around the world. So those things have, have prompted me to say we've got to step in. We've got to try and make people more compassionate, engaged. Uh, I'm so proud to be a Canadian, so proud of the values we reflect in terms of our multicultural approach to things. And we're so engaging and welcoming, and we need to continue to do that. Yeah. So being able to find ways to, to do and to support that. In terms of the issues, yeah. certainly... Uh, certainly in, in ensuring that, that we hold on to the values that we have as Canadians because uh, we're still seen around the world as one of the, the, most, the best countries in the world to live in. We have to ensure that, uh, that we have that, uh, that understanding that we need to have that type of growth. We need to have immigration. If we don't have immigration, then 
we, we have about five people working for every person on pension now. If we don't have any immigration, we're gonna, that's going to go to about two people working for every person on pension. We can't survive at that. So we've got to make sure that we keep our going. Our economy just happens to be the best in the G7 right now. We happen to have the lowest unemployment since the 1960s. So we're very fortunate. As Stephen has said, there's a, a lot of good things going on. But we really have to look at the, the big issues are affordability, what's mm -hmm. happening with respect to affordability, the issue of climate change, and certainly in, in our area, the, the issue of, of guns and gangs has been, been prevalent over the last last while. So those would be three of the issues I'm hearing a lot about on the doorstep. Okay. And, and, and is that in order? Uh, I would probably u use that, that order. There's, uh, yeah, I okay. think that's a, a Let's fair. go for affordability. Uh, 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 what's broken about it and how are you going to fix it? Well, one of the issues of, of affordability, I think, is, is that we live in, in, in Metro Vancouver. It is the, the, one of the highest areas of, of cost of living. Yeah. And so there have been very few rental. In fact, there haven't been any. In South Surrey, White Rock, the first rental building built in about 30 years was built uh, by uh, what's called the Chorus Building mm -hmm. in, in South Surrey, White Rock. And as a result, rents have gone way up. Those people who are on, on uh, pensions and disability and things have are being able to find housing, but there's no rental housing that's been put in between that. So we, we have, uh, through the uh, through a strategy, a, a national housing strategy, we've uh, federally we've put uh, $40 billion into a national housing strategy that goes over 10 years. And we were able uh, about uh, a month and a half or two months ago to announce with, with CMHC a, the development of another rental housing uh, 118 units in South Surrey White Rock, which is the first one that has come along in, in a long time. Well, again, since it's the chorus one, so we we've noticed that that rental rates. I think in parts of Langley, rental rates have gone up 60 percent. In parts of Surrey, it's gone up 40 and 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So, th the ability to to buy a house for those people who can't afford it because of the increasing housing costs, they're challenged, and now the rental costs have gone up so high that they they can't find that. So. How do you find a place to, to live in, in, in the challenges that are going on uh, with, with those societally? So the national housing strategy is, is a strategy that we've looked at. And with the stress test that came along, it wasn't very helpful for Metro Vancouver or, or Greater Toronto or Victoria because you can't find anything for $400,000. Mm -hmm. So we just have announced that that is going to increase for Metro Vancouver and Metro Toronto and Victoria to 800000 so that there can actually be some flexibility in terms of being able to get a mortgage. We don't want people having to go to the private market where they're having to pay so much more in terms of interest to, to go into housing. So those are strategies they're looking at in terms of trying to find some room and some capacity to respond to the affordability needs of our community. Okay, and I want to uh, pull. Thank you for that. I want to pull from something that Stephen Croizier said about the, uh, the the residential housing in the '90s. I think you're referring to the national housing strategy mm -hmm. that the Liberals did uh, walk away from in the 1990s. These are great ideas. They seem to be to be things that might work. When do we stop dealing with this piecemeal and pick up like a a, a real strategy that has a has a vision marching forward? Well, we have that. The National Housing Strategy is a vision that, that came out two years ago, or maybe three years ago now. It was given, and it's the first national housing strategy that is talked about, uh, a goal of trying to get half of the chronic homelessness moved off the streets and into housing, the development of 10,000 units over that 10-year ten, ten period, and working with, uh, with the municipalities and with the province. Uh, housing is is a. a I, see, three, I think I three, should three cut three in a little bit. Here, okay, you need three levels of government working together to do that. The municipalities or the cities have the the zoning, the issues yeah. that they deal with that. The province ha is engaged, so it's a cooperative agreement around three levels of government to work with that. But the initiative, the federal initiative, is around a national housing strategy that has set those specific goals in place. Yeah, yeah. and I, thank you for that. I also yeah. want to uh, ask you the same question that I asked Steve Crozier. You talked about forty billion dollars with regards to uh, a housing strategy. Where are we getting that money? Well, well, that money has come because we're we're very fortunate in terms of the economy, as Stephen has pointed out. We have a, a robust economy right now, low unemployment, uh, and and a great debt to GDP ratio. So we're in a position where we can actually put money into into those areas, and so that's why. The, the national housing strategy has gone into place. That's why we've been able to, uh, a Canada Child Benefit, be able to lift 800,000 youth 
uh, children out of poverty. Yeah. So there's a lot of good strategies, a lot of good things that can, can happen when the economy is going well. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I think uh, Tara's got some business here for us. Mm-hmm. It's time to spin the wheel of issues. Are we ready for this, Kevin? There you go. Let's see where that needle falls to determine what topic we're going to be discussing today. And it's looking like nope. housing. Uh, no, no, we're doing more. So good. We just talked about affordability. Let's, we'll give another spin. Okay, okay, another spin. All right, let's do this. And it uh, apparently is liking that housing topic, I think. Uh, yeah, so should we stick to that? Yeah, or let's, do you want let's to spin it one more time? Housing, okay, let's give you a chance to talk about housing. We, we've talked about a little bit already. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want to start with Gordon Hope this time. Well, I spoke a fair amount about it last desk around, and Stephen wanted again. So I'm. Uh, you go yes, ahead. That's, that's okay. fine. Go for it. Okay. Well, uh, the the housing issue, I, I talked about at some length mm-hmm. just as prior to this in terms of uh, the, the challenges we have. Again, uh, Metro Vancouver is one of the most costly, if not the most costly housing in uh, in Canada. And therefore, some strategies had to be put in place to, to look at that. Uh, the tre- stress test, which was put in place in terms of being able to qualify for a mortgage, and uh, the, it had to be housing under 400000 so there has been a change for, for Metro Vancouver to up to 800000 and that's just recently been announced so that we can have a, people have a better chance to be able to qualify for a mortgage in terms of that. Rental housing is a, is a big, big issue because there has not been any, re- any rental housing built in this area for up to 40 years. So we're, we're trying to, to build into that area and uh, one of the, the challenges I think we have is the number of seniors who, are, who have found some, some low-cost uh, or affordable housing. You've got a couple, if one passes away and they happen to be on uh, their OAS or, and different types of funding, with one of them, if they together are making, say, 1600 roughly uh, a year or a month, pardon me, if one of them passes away, that suddenly they're, they're cast into a, a place of almost impossible for them to live. So I met with uh, actually a retired minister who he and his wife were going through that. And he said, I didn't think I'd live this long. We're living much longer than we had. Our money is running out. What, what do we do now? So we're, we're, we've, we've got some strategies coming forward to help deal with that. One of them would be that uh, it, there'll be a survivor benefit. So if you happen to be one of you, if your spouse passes away, you'll actually get an increase of 25% of what that that was as well as if once you turn 75 there will be an increase each year beyond that so those are a couple of ways of helping respond to the affordability of housing particularly as it impacts seniors okay thank you gordon oh Stephen crozier okay and i'm glad that uh, gordy made the uh, connection with uh, with basically incomes that uh, people have but i'll just restate that the 500,000 uh, units uh, these will be uh, cooperatives will work with uh, with um, non-profit organizations in order to make sure that that housing is built uh, for people uh, to have homes. Uh, that's a big problem that we've had in the lower mainland where housing uh, uh, where, where housing has gone up, not really for the residents and not really even for welcoming new residents. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, problems with, um, with speculation, and we know that we've suffered from that. There's also money laundering that has gone on, so those things have to be uh, changed. Uh, going to affordability... The uh, we have to. I notice on your wheel we don't have uh, pharmacare. This is a huge measure. Uh, universal pharmacare is a huge measure that's going to make uh, life more affordable for people, and that includes the housing. And uh, so we are the party that is. Uh, since Tommy Douglas in, introduced uh, health care uh, in, uh, in, the, in the 60s, uh, there has been, the NDP have been in favor of and trying to push for uh, universal pharmacare. We're the only uh, country that has universal health care without universal pharmacare. So that's something that we have to put into perspective. Uh, I heard a rewind in, on CBC, a rewind um, um, a program and uh, they were talking about in the 60s this was from 68 I think and at that time there was a 
uh, the the average uh, house price was uh, thirty six thousand dollars, and the average they were wondering how can people afford that. But the average income at that point was twelve thousand dollars. Incomes have been frozen since the nineteen eighties, uh, since the early nineteen eighties, and this this is playing into it. So if you think about it, you know, average incomes right now, uh, if it was done in accordance to to housing, should be somewhere in the neighborhood of three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. That's not happening. Thank you very much, Stephen Crozier. Now, uh, Stephen Crozier just went off the wheel and brought up uh, PharmaCare, so I think we should probably give Gordon Hogan an opportunity to uh, respond to that. Certainly, and uh, I certainly concur with what, uh, what Stephen has said with respect to that, and PharmaCare and uh, a PharmaCare system is, is part of the platform that the, the Liberals have. Mm-hmm. I know when I was with the provincial government, we went into buying, instead of just buying by health authorities, ha- having tendered out for the whole province. The federal government is now doing that, and we're finding that we found provincially there was about a 30% reduction in the cost of, uh, of pharmaceuticals. We expect to find that nationally and be able to move to a, a PharmaCare plan that will compensate it. As Stephen appropriately put, we are the only country that has universal health care but not having the, uh, the pharmaceuticals associated with it, and that is our plan to tie those together in that fashion. The Thank Canadian you. federal election is happening on October 21st, and today's Pulse Politics federal election debate has taken us to South Surrey, White Rock. We really appreciate your time today. The NDP Stephen Crozier running in that party and a Liberal Party's Gordy Hogue. Before we let you go, right here on Pulse Mornings, we do have one final question for you, and this is for our listeners, of course, especially in South Surrey, White Rock. Those who are fans of the 90s, 2K, and today, we want to know what was your most favorite song and singer from the 1990s? We can start off with the Liberal Party's Gordy Hogue. I'm not sure I can remember the 90s and this, the song is associated <laughs> with it. Um, I uh, am. Uh, I was. I was. Uh, I have been a fan of uh, of a little bit of rap. And uh, when can, I was, can we give uh, a little d- bit would of that? Would you like to, to do yeah. a little bit of a rap song? Well, the, when <laughs> I was the minister for health promotion, we were trying to get a number of youth involved in it, and so I wrote a little rap song called "You So Fly," and I'll give you a yeah, couple of bars. Come on, let's you, know. you let's so it. fly, flapping with your bling. You so fly, rapping when you sing. My hormones and my peeps. And I think that's probably enough. Uh, that's a little bit of a, a teaser for you. If you want to look <laughs> at the whole thing, good. go on to YouTube that and really pick it up. requires some guts. <laughs> well, Stephen Crozier's got to, uh, <laughs> that's a, an act So to now follow, we're going right? to ask him to uh, sing American Idol style. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> Stephen Crozier, NDP, what was your most favorite song from the 1990s and singer? You know, this is the first time I've heard Gordy do this. And, and like, that's the one that's like uh, primary in my mind right now. So I'm going to have to go for Gordy Ho and his song. <laughs> <laughs> Best nicely 1990s played. rap song. Nicely played. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This has been Pulse Politics. We're going to do this together again tomorrow. Myself, Tara Lopez, Kevin Dyke, you. We're going to be focusing on a different writing. Surrey Center coming up. Surrey Center is going to be on tomorrow's show between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Got to say thank you yet again to our very wonderful candidates who joined us in studio. NDP's Stephen Crozier. The World Party is Gordy Hogue. We wish you the best on the federal election on October 21st. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Get Get informed with the next debate tomorrow with Pulse Mornings between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Hashtag Pulse Politics.